Okay, life after death. I, uh, I would like, I since I speak with some um, animation, with some energy, if not passion, on on this subject, I would like to say, uh, I'm not an atheist. Atheists are foolish too. They're making a statement that they can't possibly support. That's unsupportable. Uh, I'm what I call a nessieist. That is a person who says we know nothing have never known anything, will never know anything, and I also believe that we know this to be true, that every statement we make to the contrary, we make knowing that that statement is untrue. At bottom we know we know nothing, that nothing is provable, nothing is demonstrable, uh, nothing is even very believable. We know this to be true. Everything, every statement, every time we say, I know something, we're lying. The only time we can say, I know, and this is trusting language, is that I know nothing. That's the only statement a human being can make that is true. And that assumes that language has some validity. I wanted to make sure that you see my point about this. And this is especially true about, well, not especially, no more true about religion or God, what we call God, this word that we have generated here. Now, does this mean that there is no God. Well, I'd like to throw that word away, but there is, but it's entirely possible that the mystical experiences of, of the religious geniuses have some, that they have been aware of something that we can't discuss, that we can't name. It certainly doesn't appear to us and talk with us and help us write books like the Quran. Sorry or inspire the prophets to write their nonsense, because sorry, it's nonsense. Uh, that is, it's, it's nice, it's nice wishful thinking, and it has inspired lots of people, but sorry, uh, God didn't tell Isaiah anything, and God didn't tell Moses anything, and God didn't tell Muhammad anything. This God uh, is a vast force of... Uh, is unnameable, unthinkable, inconceivable. Okay. Is it possible that this deity, I'll call it, I like to call it, exists? Well, of course, the word exist even has no meaning here. Uh, it's all inconceivable. So our religions are toys, uh, I think. Uh, our attempts to generate morality, uh, to find sanctions and absolute assurances that morality is valid is is this true i'm afraid not no i'm afraid it's not true and life after death can we discuss this uh no we know nothing now these obe we have to create these acronyms for these things it shows how cheap uh, the level of cheap uh, popular culture acronyms are sure indications of cheap low level vulgar uh, popular culture. Now, how can I make statements like that? This implies that there is some upper and lower. Do I believe that? Not really. Uh, my statements about this have no meaning either, but I will label them in my opinion this way. Uh, that is not serious, not seriously thought out. But in the end, nothing is seriously thought out. Uh, <clears throat> nothing. Okay, uh, out-of-body experiences, we've all heard about them. People, They all have the same experience, the long tunnel. By the way, this is described in Tolstoy's uh, famous long short story, Death of Ivan Ilyich, in about 1900. Uh, same tunnel. Uh, and other people maybe had it before, but I think Tolstoy's influence on this <laughs> is huge. That is, these people read Tolstoy's Death of Ivan Ilyich in some undergraduate class, and have built careers on this, uh, collecting this psychic data. Uh, and, yeah, uh, their message is all the same. Uh, NDE, near death experience, is the same. That is, death is nothing to fear, fear not. That's a nice message, but totally unfounded. Uh, believe it if you wish. If it brings you comfort, wonderful. Uh, believe whatever you want, if it brings you comfort, wonderful. But at bottom, you know it's nonsense. That is unfounded, founded, uh, unprovable, of course, indemonstrable, of course. 
And when I use those words, I'm assuming that language and logic and discursive reason are valid. Huge assumption. Huge assumption. And in the end, probably nonsense. Language is this crude tool that we use. We agree that these terms have this meaning. But we can't say anything very meaningful, except we know nothing. And even that may not have any valid validity at all. Now, I can believe William James in Varieties of Religious Experience, classical, a classic, around 1910. Uh, James says that there are layers of reality, and sometimes we pass out of our common sense rational layer, and we have ex glimpses of other layers. I can, this is possible. Uh, after all, uh, what I said before, uh, what is reality except our imposing our little patterns, and this is Kantian, Kant, and I think Kant's uh, guess is as good as, as better than anybody's, until he gets into morality and God and all that. Um, the comforting images that some of these people offer us of these... I was on the layers of reality that uh, William James mentioned. <clears throat> By the way, he concluded that from a drug experience, not some some hallucinatory drug, some chemical, which he ingested, which and he was a scientist, remember, a medical doctor, uh, or a uh, um, professor of philosophy and psychology, anyway. Anyway, uh, and he experimented a little bit, and he concluded, yes, there are layers of reality. And our intense determination to remain in what we call our common sense rational uh, at that layer is kind of comical too. Uh, but all, I can believe that. Uh, why not? Uh, because I believe really we know nothing. And really this should, a remark like James's and these other things remind us that we know nothing. Um, but we don't know anything about these other layers either. The, and our word layers is in, interesting. <clears throat> Let's take the word layers seriously for a moment. Layers is an arbitrary word, a metaphor, of course. Layers of anything, layers on the Earth's surface, layers of, a, of an onion, <laughs> right? Um, it's a metaphor that we use to try to get at meaning, to try to impose our human little words on reality. Uh, in the end, ineffectual, in the end, kind of comical. Uh, if we take them too seriously, it's okay. What's the difference between a fool and a non-fool? What's the difference between a believer and an atheist? Not much, uh, but uh, I'm pretty sure that Nessieism is right, if language is right. Uh, that is, that we know nothing, never have, never will. That it's inherent in our condition to be unable to know anything. That it's inherent in our condition because of language, because of perception, because of consciousness. Uh, the limit, the vast limitations of all these. It's inherent in our condition that we know nothing, can say nothing. Uh, why do we pretend to pursue knowledge and truth? Desperation, I think. I think it's our fear of death. I think that explains most of what we do and say. All pretenses to knowledge are based on a flight from that truth, I would say. Life After Death 1. What do Nasiists believe? 2. What does OBE stand for? 3. In which short story were out-of-body experiences described? 4. What does NDE stand for? 5. What claim did William James make in 1910? 6. From what did James arrive to his conclusion? 7. What is inherent in the human condition?